go. This is Patricia Thomas reading from uh, the second in the Myth Pastor and the Professor Mystery from Day of Trouble, and I'm in Chapter 4. Wow, Billy, you must have hooked a monster this time, Junior yelled enviously, jumping to his feet. The mid-morning sun sparkled off the blue water, making him squint. As the line grew taut, the pole became a bamboo sea, curving out over Gallup Pond. Haul it in quick before it gets away! The tip of Billy's tongue poked between his teeth, Michael Jordan style. His pudgy face crunched in concentration. I'm trying to, he sputtered as he staggered along the grassy bank. It's stuck on something. As Billy struggled to bring his denizen of the deep to ground, Junior placed two strong hands over his brother's thick fingers and tightened their grip on the pole. Holy cow, little bro, you must have snagged a tire or a rooter. An arm rose slowly to the surface, then up and out of the water. The hand flopped back, palm up, and a plaid shirt sleeve inexplicably leapt out of the water. It dangled absurdly at the end of the fishing line. The piece of cloth swung back and forth before their eyes, a hypnotist watch at the end of the chain. Freed of the fishing hook, the bare arm slithered back into the slimy green scum of algae and vanished. Junior! Billy wailed. That's a shirt sleeve! The child promptly turned a sickly shade of white. No kidding. I thought it was a plaid fish, he replied, trying for nonchalant bravado. Here, Junior stuck out his hand. Give me the pole. Dozens of little brown freckles stood in stark relief against Billy's pale nose and cheeks as he reluctantly surrendered the rod to his 16-year-old sibling. Junior, I caught a sleeve. There was an arm stuck inside it. He clutched his brother's solid forearm with trembling fingers, then leaned forward and peered cautiously into the pond. A green leopard frog jumped along the, from the bank, hind legs splayed out behind him. It lazily floated on the surface, then dove out of sight. A fellow fisherman waved at the boys as he steered his bass boat under the wooden bridge connecting their island to the south side parking lot. If Dad was here, what would he do, Junior wondered. He cracked the knuckles of his right hand, a habit which helped him sort things out. He laid the pole in the grass and stared uneasily at the torn sleeve lying motionless in a sunny patch of clover. The cuff was unbuttoned, the thin material torn at the shoulder. A fuzzy, fuzzy black and yellow bumblebee alighted on one of the pale blue stripes, then buzzed away to a more promising bit of color. Junior gingerly unhooked the plaid fabric and laid it on the ground. Something bobbed in the murky water. Junior dropped to his knees and swung his right arm back and forth. He winced as human hair tickled his wrist and his knuckles bumped into what felt like a shoulder. Hey, little bro, he hollered. Can I get some help over here? Mom's going to kill me when she finds out I made her baby help pull a dead man out of the water. For an instant, Billy was glued in place. I have to walk past that dead sleeve, he whimpered. He pressed his elbows against his sides and raised his hands, keeping them a safe distance from their creepy catch. You can do it, you can do it, he said under his breath as he walked, his, inched his way around the shirtless sleeve. He was awfully careful not to step on it and stir up bad things like when a person walks on somebody's grave. Billy lay on his stomach on the warm grass. Junior, his arms up to the elbow in tepid water, knelt beside him. Junior, that's a dead man. Billy's voice sounded distant, detached. I suppose he's been murdered, he added calmly. He tentatively touched the submerged shoulder with his fingertips. I guess so, his brother replied, but some doctors got to pronounce him dead. That's the way they do it on TV. Boy, that's dumb, Billy shot back as he stared incredulously at his brother. I can tell he's dead. The back of the plaid shirt bobbed into view. The man's pale brown arms floated on either side of his body, elbows bent, his limp hands all but invisible in the murky water.